Hi, this is Jeff Klein, editor of Radiographics, and today I am pleased to have with us Dr. Jose Luis del Cura from the Department of Radiology at Donostia University Hospital in Donostia, San Sebastian, Spain, who is the first author of one of our featured papers in the current July 2020 issue of Radiographics. And his paper is entitled Ultrasound Guided Localization and Removal of Soft Tissue Foreign Bodies How We Do It. Dr. Del Cura, Welcome to our July 2020 author podcast. Thank you. My pleasure to be here with you. Jose, I think many of our viewers are curious how the process of ultrasound guided foreign body localization and removal works in your particular practice. Many of us here in the United States are not actively involved in this particular process. Can you describe how this works at your institution in Donostia San Sebastian and also at the Baserto University Hospital in Bilbao, where your co-authors work. Uh, do you have a dedicated service or clinic that's devoted to performing these procedures? And lastly, do you perform these in your emergency room at the request of your colleagues in emergency medicine? Yes, we have, uh, uh, in fact, a devoted, uh, devoted unit so in both hospitals, also in my former hospital, Basurdo Hospital, and, uh, and in the Donostia Hospital. We have in both uh, devoted uh, units of interventional ultrasound that performs any kind of uh, procedures that can be uh, performed using ultrasounds, not only in musculoskeletal system, but also in abdomen, and uh, also we perform the ablations and so on. And uh, in this case, uh, we uh, this, this kind of procedure the foreign body removal uh, are performing in this uh, in this kind of organization. We have uh, uh, units that are uh, specially devoted to this kind of, of techniques. So we, uh, in fact, have the advantage of uh, being very very familiar with the technique of uh, using ultrasound to guide procedures. So we are very very fast and very effective in performing this kind of uh, procedures, uh, for example, removing a, a, a performing a biopsy or removing a, 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 this kind of foreign bodies take us uh, only a, a three, four minutes, no, no more. It's a very effective uh, system that, for the that, That's impressive. Yeah. So if we can, let's, let's discuss the procedure of ultrasound guided removal of foreign bodies. Uh, in the article, you provide an 11 step process that you detail in the table, which we'll show here. Uh, and then you illustrate this process in the article using multiple movies. We'll, we'll play the movies as you take us step by step through a typical procedure, if you would. I have to say that uh, this, uh, this uh, table, this step by step table, uh, is a suggestion of one of uh, my review, uh, re review, reviewers of the, of the article. I have to say that the, the reviewers I myself, I, I, I'm a, a, review, a reviewer, uh, I have a bad press uh, among authors, you know. <laughs> but in this case, I have to say that the, 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 this, this reviewer, the reviewer uh, uh, contributed a lot uh, to this article, to improve this article by uh, this suggestion that was included in this step-by-step -step table. And uh, in fact, uh, the, this uh, uh, table makes us uh, uh, a clear uh, uh, description of the um, of the steps in which we perform this kind of uh, of technique. First of all, we have to to see how the 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 the, 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 the foreign body uh, where the, the foreign body is. And the localization is very important. So the next uh, step is uh, mainly uh, to uh, to uh, plan the procedure. Planning the procedure is the best, imp the most important thing of all the procedure because uh, avoid uh, you the the the, the, the uh, possibilities of uh, having problems like uh, uh, damage in uh, uh, vessels or nervous structures. And finally, the, the final uh, step uh, uh, are concerning uh, concerns to, to the, the physical process of, of removing the, the, the foreign body. So it's, uh, first of all, making a path uh, to, the, to the foreign body, second, to uh, place uh, a forceps uh, next to the, the foreign body, to grasp the foreign body. This is the most difficult part of the, of the process because uh, the, the, the sometimes with the forceps you pull the, the uh, you pu you push the, the foreign body uh, outside your your uh, the your, uh, the, 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 the forces and finally uh, after grasping to remove them so these all are uh, steps that uh, must be followed uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, order 
Terrific. Now, Jose, you make the point in your article that foreign bodies are echogenic on ultrasound and that after about 24 hours or so, a hypoechoic halo due to perilesional inflammation can be observed. And I presume is likely the reason these patients seek medical attention because of the associated pain and swelling. Let's look at figure one and perhaps you can take us through these different types of subcutaneous foreign bodies and their different appearances. Yeah, I have to say that, uh, in fact, this uh, hypoechogenic uh, halo uh, doesn't appear in all the cases. Uh, for example, in the uh, contraceptive implants or also in uh, plastic uh, uh, implants, uh, the plastic uh, foreign bodies uh, usually don't appear. They usually appear especially in uh, vegetable uh, splinters and also metallic also. And uh, in fact, for us, it's a, it's a help. And uh, yes, uh, uh, this kind of uh, this kind of halo, this kind of infl uh, re represents inflammation around the foreign body, and is one of the reasons the patient requests uh, help of the of the of the surgeon. And usually, the surgeon sends us uh, the patient after uh, seeing this kind of of uh, pain uh, because they need to to, to solve the, the problem. Usually, the patients are sent to us for first of all for, uh, to, for diagnosis because in most of the cases the, the for anybody are can, cannot be seen for the for the referral med, 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 uh, doctor. And uh, second of uh, of this because they know we perform this kind of uh, procedures to remove if, if we consider the possibility of uh, of removing the so the, the, uh, the only the the, the, the request is only one for that, that both uh, comprises both uh, uh, diagnosis and uh, removal of the, of the body body. Great. Well, Dr. Del Kula, you make the point that it is best to take a transverse approach to removing these foreign bodies as they tend to be elongated in nature. Uh, you show this nicely in figure four in the article. Uh, can you discuss why this perpendicular approach is preferred? I would have thought that for friable foreign bodies in particular, there would be a concern about fragmenting the foreign body once it's grasped and you begin to remove it, but I presume that is not the case. Uh, does it depend upon the substance of the foreign body as far as the approach is concerned? Uh, fragmenting is a real problem because but it, uh, only in a specific case, the CRQ. The CRQ spines, you know, uh, can uh, really, uh, really, if you try to, to grasp them, uh, if you, you are uh, destroying them. In some cases in which we have uh, some cases of uh, CRQ uh, 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 spines, uh, in fact, what we do, what we do is, not, uh, is not removing this, uh, but uh, fragmenting this. But uh, why is the reason we prefer a transverse approach? The main reason is the, the thickness of the forceps. Uh, if you try to guide, the, uh, for example, in a biopsy, a needle uh, into a target, it's easy because the, the needle is, is thin, so it's easy to see perfectly well where the, 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 the needle is aimed to. But when you uh, use a forceps, the forceps is thick. So uh, the exact plating in which uh, you are uh, located uh, is difficult to see because the, the, the sometimes the, the, the direction of the of the forceps appears to be clearly directed to, to, the, to the foreign body, but it's not real. So the main uh, way, the, 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 the best way to see that we are approaching currently the, the, the point in which the, the, the foreign body is, is using a transverse approach. Well, uh, this is very easy uh, and this is very convenient when we uh, use a soft uh, foreign body when we, we try to, to, to remove a soft uh, foreign body like the contraceptive uh, implants uh, uh, because when we grasp these uh, foreign bodies uh, if, you, if we pull uh, the, the, the foreign body bends and uh, is easily extracted but uh, when the uh, foreign body is rigid if we grasp from the middle so it's impossible to pull them because uh, the, the, the resistance is very important in this case we we uh, try to uh, perform a transverse approach, but uh, we usually go to one of the two ends of the foreign body, so that when we pull of this uh, of this end, it's easily that it it gains it gains uh, easily to the through the path. Because uh, in fact uh, we uh, in fact what we do is removing it. Uh, uh, longitudinally uh, instead of transversely because it, uh, removing a rigid uh, uh, foreign body transversely is impossible because of the resistance. Uh, I don't know if, if it's clear what I said. Yes. 
Now, you indicate that as of the submission of this article, you had removed 41 foreign bodies, with most of these being in the shoulder, representing, as you mentioned earlier, contraceptive implants, which have a silicone rubber capsule that are normally removed by palpation, but occasionally are not palpable. Uh, is this how you got started with performing these procedures under ultrasound guidance, or is this just an extension of performing these for other foreign bodies? And as you answer, we'll show movie six, which demonstrates this particular procedure uh, as you respond. Well, uh, some years ago, um, uh, a gyne gynecologist of my hospital uh, consulted us about uh, how to localize uh, uh, this kind of foreign bodies uh, that had the problem to 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 to, extract, to, to remove uh, in one of their patients. I uh, commented after uh, watching perfectly well this kind of of, uh, of devices. Uh, I commented to uh, him that, uh, in fact, for us, it was very, very easy to remove this kind of, of, uh, of devices. He told me, well, uh, try it, show me, show me how to, how do, how do you do this? <laughs> that. And uh, I immediately, in one minute, removed uh, completely the, the, the foreign body. So uh, he was absolutely amazed at, uh, I'm very happy to send me all the rest of the patients uh, with this kind of problem. So it was the same case in, with the same uh, foreign bodies. I started to perform this kind of procedures in foreign bodies because of the surgeons that were not uh, able to, to remove. Uh, so they, first of all, sent us uh, for location of this foreign body. And uh, as, uh, well, in fact, I started uh, doing this kind of, uh, of procedures because of, uh, I was in a workshop in an RSNA meeting in Chicago about 15 years ago. It was in, and in this workshop, I learned because one of the of the professors there show how to do this kind of procedures. And I, a couple of months after this, I was uh, I found a case that was perfect for us, and I started to perform performing this kind of procedures. And now in my hospital, nobody uh, uh, operate the patients to remove foreign body. So I have to thank uh, the RSNA <laughs> for this. That's that's a great story, and it's often the case that when you perform one of these procedures for somebody and it has a good outcome, and they realize that you can do it much more easily than perhaps they can surgically, that all of a sudden they start referring their patients to you. They're more than happy to have you do it. And I'm sure the patients are happy as well. So let's close by showing a little bit of a most unusual case, uh, which is that of a fragmented pleural ca drainage catheter in an eight-year-old boy. Uh, we're gonna show figure 11 and movie five uh, and have you take us through this particular case, if you would. Yeah, uh, the, um, this uh, catheter, this small catheter, this was a tip of a uh, pleural catheter. Uh, in fact, for uh, children, we frequently use a kind of uh, catheter that is uh, a, a device specially designed uh, uh, for to treat a pneumothorax. That is a pneumocath catheter. You know, I don't know if you know this kind of catheter in which the catheter uh, uh, is uh, uh, inside of a, of a needle, of a thick needle. So, in the, the in this kind of catheters, when you make a change in direction of the catheter, you can cut the point because uh, sometimes the point the, the distal end of the catheter, of the catheter uh, is uh, outside of the needle and if the needle changes the directions it can cut the, 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 the distal end. So uh, in a couple of cases we have had a couple of cases in which uh, this uh, problem happened and uh, after sometimes in the controls we observed that a, 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 a small fragment of the catheter was uh, inside. So in a children, you can left this uh, uh, there. So we um, uh, perform the, the procedure in the same way we have uh, uh, usually performed this kind of uh, technique. And uh, in fact, this was one of the easiest uh, uh, for a body to, to remove, really, really very, very easy. I'm sure the parents were very happy to, to have you do this. <laughs> so Dr. Del Cura, I wanna thank you for taking the time today to discuss your paper on ultrasound guided localization and removal of soft tissue foreign bodies, how we do it, which can be found in the current July 2020 issue of Radiographics. Jose, thank you so much for your time and for your article. Thank you to you. I'm very happy to, to share this with you. Thank you very much. Great.